after doing this for Europe, America, and Asia, Africa. Africa is a continent with a lot of territorial disputes. A few of them likely happen due to the issues that exist with the unnatural borders the countries hold, consequence of European colonialism and the Conference of Berlin, in which European powers divided the continent amongst themselves, without taking into account the visions among African people. The natural location of tribes, for instance, were mostly ignored and some of them suddenly found their home territory divided between the colonies of three different European nations. However, some disputes aren't of European responsibility and just exist as they do between two random nations across anywhere else in the world, one a specific island, piece of land, or part of the sea because of its strategic location, resources, or just out of some irrelevant reason. So let's get started and take a look at some of the biggest territorial disputes in Africa. Starting with the ones on the thumbnail. First, the Western Sahara dispute between Morocco and the self-proclaimed Sahrawi Republic. The UN classify it as a non-self-governing territory, but since 1975, it is ruled by Morocco in 80% of its territory. Western Sahara is a large disputed territory on the coast of Northwest Africa, but despite being large, it is one of the most sparsely populated territories in the world, mainly consisting of desert. Morocco had claimed this land since early on, at least 1957, but it had been a Spanish colony and then the UN demanded that Spain should decolonize it and hold a local referendum regarding independence. And they sort of did the first part. In 1975, they relinquished control of the territory, but handed it over to a joint commission with Morocco. Apparently, Mauritania, which had also claimed the land, then withdrew their claim. After this, Morocco took control of almost all of the territory, as it remains until today. However, the United Nations considers the Polisario Front, a movement formed to fight for independence, to be the legitimate representative of the local Sahrawi people and maintains the Sahrawis have a right to self-determination. Then we have the Alaib and Bir Tawil disputes between Egypt and Sudan. Both of these areas are located on the border between Egypt and Sudan. One is claimed by both and another is claimed by neither or by both on behalf of the other. Let me explain it in a simpler way. Both Egypt and Sudan claim the Alaib Triangle, it's a coastal region and potentially useful, and as compensation for their claim, sort of, they want the other side to get Bir Tawil. The thing is, Bir Tawil isn't on the coast and apparently is nothing more than a lot of desert, so nobody wants it. The argument comes from different interpretations of the political boundary set in 1899 by the Anglo-Egyptian condominium. Let's summarize this in a simpler way as well. The 1899 treaty stated that Sudan's lands started below the 22nd parallel line, thus defining the political border. But in 1902, the UK drew a separate map to reflect actual use of the land by the tribes in the region, an administrative border, if you will. Egypt asserts the political boundary and Sudan asserts the administrative one. With the independence of Sudan in 1956, both countries claimed sovereignty over the area. Sudan considers it a part of their Red Sea state and even included it in their local elections in the 1980s. But in 1994, the Egyptian military took control of the area as a part of their Red Sea governorate and have been actively investing in it since. Sudan's internal conflicts probably kept it from taking a very active role in diplomatically fighting over their ownership of the land. Plus, Egypt has apparently rejected international arbitration or even political negotiations regarding the area. According to Sudan's interpretation, Bir Tawil could be Egyptian as Alaib could be theirs. According to Egypt, Alaib belongs to them because it is above the 22nd parallel line and Bir Tawil to Sudan because it is below it. Going back to Morocco, there's also a dispute that they have with Spain over Ceuta and Melilla plus a few other lands. Since the early moments of colonial times, all the way to the 20th century decolonization processes, Spain held territories in North Africa, some conquered directly by them and some taken from the Portuguese which had themselves conquered it from the Moors earlier in history. Today, they no longer control the vast lands they did as they were rightfully given back to the native populations or their successors. But Spanish presence in North Africa 
remains. To Ceuta, Melilla, and other plazas de soberania. These which I guess you could directly translate to sovereignty squares are a series of unincorporated Spanish overseas minor territories scattered along the Moroccan Mediterranean coast as we can see here on this map. Ceuta and Melilla are defined differently as major territories because they are bigger. As you can imagine, Morocco isn't thrilled about this and probably wants to recover all of them as they are adjacent to their territory and not Spain save a couple of islands. In 2002, there was an incident in one of them, between the two states, in Perejil, when a squad of the Royal Moroccan Navy occupied it. After an exchange of declarations between both countries, the Spanish troops eventually evicted the Moroccans. After this, an agreement of status quo was made between Morocco and Spain, but Moroccan claims likely remain. Iswatini is located inside South Africa, and so there are a few territorial disputes between the two, specifically in Kangwan, the areas here in red. Iswatini claims territories which its states were confiscated during colonial times. The area claimed by Iswatini is the former Bantustan of Kangwan, which now forms parts of South African regions. It was, for a period of time, intended by South Africa to be a semi-independent home for the their Swazi people, and it even had technical self-rule for a while. However, a real Swaziland, now renamed Iswatini, already exists, and so logic would dictate these regions be joined and commonly ruled. There was an attempt to transfer these territories to them in 1982, and an agreement was even found between the two governments, but due to popular opposition in South Africa, it never came to be, something that would have been incredibly useful for Iswatini, given that the proposed deal also included a part of the Zulu homeland, KwaZulu, giving the now landlocked nation an access to the sea. Today, this Zulu territory is, I think, off the table, even for the Swazi claim, but the others might still one day rejoin. South Africa has another dispute, this time with Namibia, over the Orange River borderline. Namibia was at a time a German colony. After World War I, it became under British rule through their South African colony. Despite some opposition from South Africa, Namibia then became its own country, temporarily existing as Southwest Africa. And along the borderline between these two countries, there's a disputed issue. Namibia claims the border lies along the middle of the river, while South Africa claims it lies along the north bank, thus giving it full control over the entire river instead of sharing it with the Namibians. Between the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Uganda, there is the Rukwanzi Island dispute. This island is located in the southern area of Lake Albert in Central Africa, and it's home to around a thousand fishermen. I assume these fishing resources available in the lake are the cause for the dispute. The DRC and Uganda are located on opposite sides of the lake, and they both claim this single island. In 2007, Congo apprehended four Ugandan soldiers they said had crossed the dividing line in the lake. And later that year, the country's militaries engaged in a skirmish near the island. Later that year, Congo occupied the area, and from what I could find, it remains under DRC rule until today. Also going back to Sudan, although South Sudan, their dispute over the Elemi Triangle with Kenya. The Elemi Triangle is an area of disputed land in East Africa. The territory is claimed by South Sudan and Kenya. The territory also borders Ethiopia, but the Ethiopian government has never made any official claim on the land, and in fact agreed that it was all Sudanese in various treaties. Apparently the dispute arose from a 1914 treaty in which a straight line was used to divide territories that were at the time both part of the British Empire. When these nations became independent, they apparently didn't agree with the dividing line, at least that's my understanding. Kenya effectively controls the area and Sudan's internal conflict, once again, has probably led to an action from their part in recent times. And obviously there's also a few disputes between South Sudan and Sudan, or North Sudan, due to the separation of the two countries desired by the South. Both Sudan and South Sudan have claimed a few areas after the internal conflict that led to the South's independence. Abye, Eglik, 
Joda and Kafia Kingi are examples of this. Abia, for instance, is temporarily and according to the peace deal, a condominium under common rule of both Sudan and South Sudan. Apparently, Abia and Kafia Kingi are the most significant pieces of land over which a disagreement still remains, which we can see here on the border of the two African nations. The example we saw earlier with Spain was a demonstration of how European colonialism is not only at the source of some of these conflicts between now sovereign African nations, but create cases in which European nations themselves are still directly involved. Other examples of that are the dispute that the United Kingdom takes part in along with Mauritius and the Maldives over the Chagos Archipelago. This one is almost near Asia, but for some reason it was listed as being an African dispute, so I'll include it here. The United Kingdom administers the Chagos Archipelago as part of the British Indian Ocean Territory. However, the International Court of Justice has found the United Kingdom administration to be unlawful and called upon the United Kingdom to complete the process of decolonization, handing over the islands to Mauritius. They were first discovered by the Portuguese in 1532, settled by the French in 1770, and ceded to Britain in 1814. They were then ruled by the United Kingdom through their colony of Mauritius. When Mauritius became independent, they claimed they should have gotten the Chagos Islands as well. And now the International Court of Justice has determined that this is accurate. Other examples of disputes, including European nations, can be found with France. Their dispute with Madagascar and the Comoros over Glorioso Islands or Banque du Geyser. The Glorioso Islands are a group of French islands and rocks totaling five square kilometers, so not that big. They are geographically part of the Comoro Islands between the French overseas region of Mayotte and the nation of Madagascar. From my understanding, their land is useless, but they do have an exclusive economic zone of 48,000 square kilometers, so sea control must be the justification for these claims. 112 kilometers southwest of Glorioso Island is Bank du Geyser, a mostly submerged reef in the Mozambique Channel. I'm not sure why they want it, unless it just has to do with generalized territorial control of the sea as well. However, the reef does have, apparently, an abundance of seabirds, although I can't see the utility in that. They also argue with Comoros over Mayotte or with Mauritius over Tromelin. When they became independent in 1975, Comoros claimed Mayotte as part of their new country given the geographical proximity and the effective belonging of Mayotte to the Comoros Islands archipelago. However, the French refused, and in a 2009 referendum, the population supported becoming an overseas department of France. But it is likely that Comoros does not abdicate on the idea of eventually uniting its archipelago. The argument with Mauritius is over Tromelin Island, also in the region but to the east of Madagascar, administered as part of the French Southern and Antarctic lands. It's also a French overseas territory, but Mauritius claims sovereignty over the island, I think for the same reason Comoros does over Mayotte, geographical proximity. And finally for this video, one that isn't exactly a dispute, but it might be. The Socotra Archipelago between Yemen and Somalia. The Socotra Archipelago are these set of small islands, however, despite being in closer proximity to Somalia, they are ruled over by Yemen as the government of Socotra. Somalia, while not formally claiming the archipelago, asked for the United Nations to look into the status of it and whether or not it should belong to Yemen or rather be given to them, Somalia. Territorially, they could be right, but historically, Yemen's rule is justified. Before British colonial rule, the archipelago was a part of the Mada Sultanate, which existed in the area stretching from Yemen. So, those are a few of the territorial disputes that exist in the African continent. If I missed any big ones, or if you know of any other interesting ones that I didn't mention, just leave a comment below telling me what they are. All of the videos I made on this series across all continents had a lot of additional suggestions from you in the comments, so in some time I might make a follow-up on each of them with the additional cases you called my attention to. I'm not going to make a full video for Oceania because there's only five cases of small islands whose ownership and or authority are disputed, which you can briefly see here. Thanks so much for watching this video. Happy New Year if you celebrated it today. Subscribe if you want to and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.